The Coin Series channel appreciates your continued support. Man Bitcoin has been on an incredibly strange and remarkable run, completely unlike anything that has come before. Today, it came within a hair's breadth of its all-time high but fell short. On the other hand, we're up about 4% for the day at $66,363, with a 5% increase. Ethereum had a good day. The Solana even though XRP isn't doing much right now. It's an exciting time to be a part of the cryptocurrency sector because of all the promising advancements. I'd want to give you a quick rundown of something great that we can talk about later. When we examine XRP and Ledger, we see that its strength is in the fact that it can enable cheap, fast, and trustworthy payments. And I think that is the resource we ought to put to use. What they do with Ripple is what makes it exciting. Their focus is on enhancing the operations of existing institutions rather than on building new banks that can link to the XRP ledger or on reshaping present financial institutions to better support XRP. Something is wrong with that. In order to allow XRP shine in its niche, they are extending their systems to integrate with pre-existing financial, banking, money center, etc. processes, in my opinion. We have failed to achieve our objective when considering the broader context of blockchain technology and the capabilities of XRP. Remember that the XRP ledger is great for exchanging any kind of value, not just payments. The built-in decentralized exchange is what really sets it apart from other cryptocurrencies. I want to stress this idea in today's video. I don't know what to do with this. Would you like us to build smart contract, sidechain, or zombie chain blockchains that will serve no purpose? Is it acceptable to communicate to facilitate the creation of applications? We present an XRP ecosystem smart contract blockchain. Another option is to mimic Ripple's acquisition of existing banks by acquiring valuable yet transaction-heavy blockchains and incorporating them into our XRP ledger sidechains. Think about Ethereum. It's highly customizable, and you've used it to create some of the most popular apps in the world. These applications already exist. The time has come to put their worth into action. The blockchain that powers Ethereum excellent transactions, commerce, and quick payouts are only the start. Join them. Figure out how to add a sidechain to the XRP ledger, and develop a scaling solution that uses both the XRP ledger and Ethereum. Never again will you have to sit around and hope that someone makes something good that you can exchange for the Ethereum ledger or whatever. You will be assisting both blockchains and it is now feasible to do amazing volume. The question, what would that mean for the XRP, is one that I frequently am asked. Funds insufficient? It seems pointless to me, NAS. I strongly disagree with that question. I think it would be fantastic for the XRP ledger first and foremost because of how integral it is to its value. Once XRP enters the ledger in eight coming off ever, you can anticipate a deluge of trades with a substantial percentage of that activity moving through it. The true inquiry is, what does this do for the user? Since XRP and the XRP ledger are merely instruments, there will be too many users and too many transactions for Ethereum's magical layer 2s and sidechains to manage. In order to finish transactions fast and cheaply, they need help. We can seize this moment to create an impact. I don't think this is exclusive to Ethereum either. I think it will affect all smart contract blockchains as their popularity grows. Eventually, the number of transactions will outstrip the capacity of the blockchain, regardless of how well designed it is. Because of its lack of that feature, which causes things to move at a snail's pace, the XRP ledger is ideal for our ecosystem's payment and settlement processing needs. You are able to load a large number of transactions onto the ledger and enable them because the remaining portion is not hindering us getting in the way, or making transactions expensive. Stop wasting time making new zombie chains and start using the many amazing blockchains already out there to allow trade in a way that benefits everyone involved. Personally, I feel that way. It appears that we should move forward in that way. The XRP ledger is live right now, and I'm ready to fill a demand while also making a contribution to innovative blockchains that are valuable and could change the world. We will continue to discuss this in the near future but that is the path to success. In my view, payments and settlements must always be the primary focus of the XRP ledger. Spooling up zombie chains that won't be used can save us time and energy. Make contact with the key stakeholders now. Pipes and these blockchains are all that's needed.
In addition, we will soon be outlining the procedures to accomplish this. To my mind, that's where the benefits will be most seen right away. Furthermore, the volume of your chain could be massive. Just so you know, if you do manage to build it all on chain volume, Ripple can use it to pay their institutions. And we can use it to pay ourselves if we want to. Because of it, the entire ecosystem is enriched. At a later time, we will go over this subject again. SEC. This must be refocused. The SEC has delayed its decision on spot ETF applications yet again. Despite persistent resistance from Fidelity and BlackRock, this may be the month to keep an ear to the ground if the experts are to be believed. Some people think it will happen shortly. Maybe some of my acquaintances think CCS is going to be hostile and will insist on this. The beep in me is confused about the future, but we're all certain that loyalty to BlackRock will triumph in the end. However, be aware that going forward, this will be the norm for trading all coins. What you're witnessing with Bitcoin at the moment will closely resemble it. Some of them won't sell well on the first day. Their plan is to figure it out, package a lot of stuff, and have a lot of great products, but we might not end up buying any of them. If you ask me, when big money and individual investors start playing around with altcoins, Ethereum will be at the head of the pack. Bitcoin is approaching its all-time high in terms of price. However, approximately 550 million GBTC have been removed from the system. What gives? We've previously proven that GBTC is an awful, overpriced product. You might anticipate a drop in new investment given the present situation. Logically optimistic facts, and the likelihood that people will quit the market in large numbers. Consequently, investors might look into grayscale fidelity or maybe something else entirely. How amazing is that? Relative to our all-time high, we are just 1% off. This stage is being observed here. The fact that Bitcoin's value increased from $34 to $88 in a span of 10 days makes a repeat performance very improbable. Having said that, doubling down won't happen overnight. But there's no denying that the cryptocurrency market is experiencing a positive period even though Bitcoin hasn't arrived yet. I am among the many who think it is a meaningless metric. Not that it will solve all problems overnight, but in the long term. It will make a significant difference by lowering supply to meet increasing demand. This enormous greed is already having an impact on the market. So that's puzzling to me. That being said, I will admit that I am not selling but rather distributing Bitcoin at the moment. It is anyone's guess how far this goes. As far as MicroStrategy is concerned, the $600 million will go toward buying more Bitcoin. You can see my point of view clearly here, in my view. He pays astronomical sums for Bitcoin. Just so you know, he has a massive supply. I understand that most people are on his side, but I still think he should be careful with his long-term debt and pay it all off at once. When it comes to his profession, he knows more than I do. He says I'm just not built for bears, but I guess we'll find out and keep all the amazing Bitcoin he has on hand. Bad things might happen if he loses it all. $100 billion is the market cap of Tether. The Tether FUD has been circulated for quite some time. They look to be completely in control. That needs to be monitored. Despite predictions that the USDT stablecoin's market cap would never surpass $100 billion, it is simply dominating its competitors. It is great to see that their firm is able to retain all that capital and earn interest on it. This is a great business venture for everyone. Increasing XRP's utility is something Ripple is determined to do. Brad Garland says these things in the video, truthfully. We are now supporting more XRP applications. Important as it is to have partnerships that help put the customer first. It is even more important to have cross-border payments, trading on DEX, and liquidity pools with MMS. Regular folks ought to make use of the XRP ledger. Oh, it's only for institutions. A lot of people say. Its only function is this. That is not true. Sure. It's ridiculous. Everyone who is capable of using their skills should use them if it is about our builders making people's lives easier through applications they desire to use and works properly. That is the crux of it. While Waves will make every effort to facilitate the builder's efforts, the onus is ultimately on them to complete the project. They were given the opportunity to design things that people genuinely want to purchase. At long last, 
This latest upgrade shows that the supremacy fight between Ethereum and Solana is heating up. Disputes do not exist here. Solana is really dominating. You guys, the smart contract blockchain that is all the rage right now is going to be a moneymaker. In my opinion, you can't compare this to Ethereum, and it won't hold a candle to the real thing. I think it will end up being a self-sufficient scaling solution for Ethereum in the end. Leave your opinions in the comments section. Please subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. Departe. Muchas gracias.